Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to cut grass. To get started we're going to delete the default cube and then press Shift A and then add in a plane. I'm going to scale this plane up about three times. I'm going to look on the top left maybe go a little bit past three so right about there is probably good. And next up we're going to subdivide this. How this is going to work is we're going to be using weight paint. With weight paint, it requires geometry to actually work, and with the four vertices on our plane, that's not going to work. We need a lot more geometry. So I'm going to press A to select everything, right click, and then subdivide. We're going to do this a couple more times until we get the geometry that we want. And let's go with one more time. And there we go. I think that is quite enough geometry to work with, so we're going to go out of edit mode and then go into top view. I'm going to rotate this plane 45 degrees by holding control and snapping it to 45 degrees. Next up, we get to decide what the design we want our grass to be cut in. You can have a logo being cut into the grass, or you can do what you saw at the beginning of this tutorial by having a cube go up and down just like that. That is what we're going to do. I'm going to press Shift A and then add in a curve, and then select the Bezier curve. I'm going to go into edit mode, and we can see here is the curve. And I don't want it to be a curve actually, I want it to be completely flat. So to fix that, I'm going to press the V key and select Vector. So now we have points right here that are just completely sharp as you can see. I'm going to Control Z that, go into Object Mode, and then rotate this 90 degrees, and then place it over on the left side. I'm going to place it right there on this grid line. All we have to do now is just go into Edit Mode and start extruding, moving up, extruding, moving up, just like this all the way across the plane. So I will select this point on the bottom, I'll drag it a little bit lower, press E to extrude, and drag it to this grid line, this grid line right here. We'll extrude it upwards, holding control, I'll snap it to right about there. E to extrude, we'll drag it this way, bring it to this grid line, and just repeat the process going across. And there we go, I'm happy with that result. I'm also gonna move it halfway into this grid unit. So we're gonna come over here, press G and X, and move it halfway in right there. And then just double check that you do have enough room. I'm gonna drag those a little bit lower along the Y, just like that. We'll drag these ones higher slightly, drag these ones a little higher, just like that. And there we go. Now what we can do is press Shift A and then add in a mesh and then a cube. And we're going to scale this cube down by half, so press S. 0.5 and enter. I'm going to have this cube follow this path that we just created. So over in the constraints tab, I'm going to click add constraint and select the follow path. For the target, we're going to go with the Bezier curve. And we can see it ended up being in this position. So now if we click animate path, what it's going to do is it's going to go up this way. I don't want it to start at this point, I want it to start on the other point. So what you can do is select it, go into edit mode, press A, right click and then go switch direction. So now instead it's going to be starting at this point and then going down. I'm also going to select that point, drag it up a little bit higher so it's not touching the plane. Then we can press the space bar and here is what we have. That looks pretty good. I'm then going to go back to the beginning of the animation, duplicate this and place it on the other side. So I'm going to select the cube and the curve, shift D, and then I'm going to change the pivot point to the 3D cursor and make sure the 3D cursor is at the center of the world. And we're going to rotate this uh, 180 degrees just like that. Then what we can do is select this cube right here and press Alt G to snap it back to its original position right here. Then if we press the space bar, here is the result. And there we go. We now have our curve. And if you want them to go slower, you can select the curve, go over to the curve properties underneath the path animation, you can set the number of frames right here. Let's bring this a little bit higher because I think they're moving a little bit fast. Let's go with 180. I'll select this curve right here and do the same thing, 180. And now they're gonna be moving slightly slower. All right, we have our animation and now it's time to set up the dynamic paint. I'm gonna select my plane and go over to the physics tab and then select dynamic paint. We're gonna leave the type on canvas and then add this in. For the end frame, we're going to go with 200, and then for the sub steps, we're going to drag this up to a value of 2, just to make sure everything works good. For the surface type, we're going to switch it over to the weight mode. The scale influence value right here controls the strength of the weight. With it set to 1, it's going to be painting red, which is a value of 1 for the weight, and doing this, it's going to completely get rid of all of the grass. 
We want there to be a little bit of grass left, so we're gonna drag this lower. Let's go with a value of about 0.7, so it's gonna be about 70% weight. If you want to, you can check the dissolve, and this will give a cool effect of the grass growing back. I'm just gonna leave it off though. Underneath the cache, you can see it's currently grayed out, and the reason for that is because we haven't saved our project. So press Ctrl S and save your project. And once you do that, you should be able to bake it in. Before you do that, open up the output tab and then click on this button right here to add in a new vertex group. Select your cubes and we're gonna go dynamic paint, set the type over to brush and then add this in. That's all you really need to do. We'll select the other one as well, dynamic paint, set it to brush and then add this in. One more thing that you should double check before you bake this in is that your cubes are actually touching the plane as they go through. If for some reason that they're above the plane, like right about here or so, they're above it, it's not going to affect it. You need to make sure that they actually are touching the plane for the vertex paint to actually work correctly. From there, you can save your project one more time and then click on bake. It should bake very quickly, as you can see. I'm also gonna set the end frame to 200. Now that we've set up the dynamic paint, we are ready to set up the particles. So I'm gonna go over to the particle system tab and create a new one. Switch the type over to hair, and if we get out of this view, we can see the hair. I'm gonna drag the hair length a little bit lower, probably around there or so is probably good. Next up, we're gonna click Advanced, open up the Physics tab and the Render tab. The Brownian effect right here will give the grass a little bit more randomness, so you can see if I drag this up, they become a lot more crazy. We're just gonna drag this up just slightly, probably around a value of 0.03 and the number of particles, we're gonna go up to 25,000. There we go, that looks a lot better. And the other thing that we're gonna do is open up the children's tab and then change it over to simple. With this clumping value, if I was to drag this lower, you can see they start to become clumped at the bottom right here. And that's actually how grass is. This is a little bit too strong though, so let's go about halfway. Negative 0.5 is probably good. The render amount of particles is currently set to 100. This is way too high and we actually don't need that many, so let's go down to 20. And of course, the most important part of this animation is the actual cutting of the grass, and to do that, we're gonna open up the vertex groups and set the length over to dp underscore weight. Once we do this, we can play our animation, and you can see it's actually painting the grass rather than cutting it. So in order to fix that, we need to invert this by clicking the button on the side and that will actually invert it. And now it's cutting the grass instead of adding. I think the grass length is a little bit too high. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top and then set this down to, let's go with point uh, two eight. If your animation is not working and you can see here, if I play my animation, the grass is not being affected at all by the dynamic paint. Even though we have the vertex group selected right here, it's not working at all. The reason this is not working is because if we go over to the modifier tab, the dynamic paint is below the particle system. This took me a very long time to figure out and it was very frustrating, but all you have to do is drag this above and now it is now working. As you can see, it's now cutting the grass. So double check if your animation is not working that, that the dynamic paint is above the particle system in the modifier stack. Now it's on to the materials. The material for the ground is just gonna be a ground texture, so I'm gonna click new on this material, press shift A, and then add in a texture, and then an image texture. If you want to use the same one that I'm using, you can go ahead and find the link in the description. I'm gonna click open, and then navigate to it. The texture that I'll be using is this one right here, so I'm gonna select it, and then go open image. The scale is currently way too big, so I'm going to select my texture, control T, and this will add in a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. If that shortcut did not work for you, make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled in your preferences. So underneath the add-ons, make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, and then you'll be able to use that shortcut. For the scale, I'm gonna drag that up to five, and that's basically all we really need to do for the ground. Maybe bring the roughness up to a value of 0.8. And now for the actual grass strands. Over in the Material tab, I'm going to create a new material by hitting that plus sign, new, and we'll call this material grass. The first node that we'll add for our grass material is a hair info node. I'm gonna press shift A and go underneath the input tab and then select the hair info right here. We have a couple different options, but the one we're gonna be using is the intercept. I'm gonna press shift A and add in a converter color ramp. We'll take the intercept, plug that into the factor, and then the color into the base color of our principled shader. To actually see what's happening, we can go over to the particle system, 
Underneath the render tab, we're going to select the material as the grass material. Then if we press Z and go into rendered view, we should be able to see our grass material working. You can see on the bottom it's using the black color, but as it goes up, it becomes a lot lighter. If we add in a new handle, we can change this handle over to a green color, something like this, maybe a little bit darker. We'll add in another handle, drag it over to the right side. We'll have this one a little bit lighter, something like this. And then for the white, we're going to select it and just give it more of a yellow color, something like that. And there we go. So just the top of the grass has a little bit of a yellow color and I think that looks pretty cool. And that's basically it. From there you can add in an HDR, render this out into an animation, add a cool background, and you have a cutting grass effect. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you learned something new or created your own animation, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Also, if you're new here, consider clicking that subscribe button so you can see more Blender tutorials in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.